Hello everyone, my name is Vanessa Jackson, formerly known as, um, sorry, formerly known as Coach Becerra. I first want to thank MSU Denver Athletics Department for putting on such a great event. The time I spent here will always have a special place in my heart, so I'm grateful and excited to be celebrating with all of you tonight. It makes me so happy and proud to see a lot of our former players here. I'm so incredibly proud of you, proud of you all, and I, I love you all. Thank you for being here. <clears throat> Whew. Okay, let me see. Let me find my place. I am unbelievably honored to be up here introducing Coach Fisher into the Hall of Fame. You see, it's crazy to think 20 years ago, Coach was, uh, recruited me to go play at OJC, Otero Junior College. Just to give you an idea of what a great recruiter she is, I committed to OJC without even visiting the campus. <laughs> I didn't know what to expect, but I really liked Coach Fisher, so I committed. Let me tell you all, I was in disbelief when my parents dropped me off. <laughs> La Junta is small, it's stinky, and it has tarantulas. If my parents would have let me, I would have jumped in the car and went back with them. <laughs> Ultimately, I'm glad that they made me stick it out because those two years at Otero ended up being the best two years of softball I've ever played. We were the first team in Otero history to make it to nationals, and I left there play of the year and all -American, with all American accolades. <laughs> I bragged to my kids and I, I bragged to my kids and husband about how good I was, but what they secretly don't know is that Coach Fisher had a lot of to do with that success. I then went on to finish my eligibility and in 2008 I reached out to Coach again. I reached out to Coach. Again, knowing very little, she recruited me to come help start back up the softball program, program at MSCU Denver. I had no desire to coach and although I was getting paid nothing but my schooling, that was good enough for my parents, so it was good enough for me. I soon realized it was an opportunity that changed not only my career path, but shaped me into the person I am today. The years I spent, assist, the, the years I spent assisting Coach Fisher at MSU are memories I, I can share for a lifetime. Yes, we were damn good and we won lots of games, but the relationships she built with her players, parents, and families were unmatched. Coach built a championship culture here at MSU. She took pride in winning, but she loved her people. Coach Padge sadly was not able to make it, but here's what she had to say. The first time I met Coach Fisher, I asked her what her coaching philosophy was. Without hesitation, she told me to pull out all the potential out of each of her players. I firmly believe she has spent decades doing this, doing this for hundreds of young women. Her dedication to her athletes and to their families are unparalleled. In a world filled with people who can only care about the outcome, she has shown you to take the time to build your athletes up as people, both on the field and out, off the field. Winning is the by byproduct of hard work and has shown a relentless effort to putting in the work." End quote. Coach Fisher is prompt and efficient. Every practice she had a detailed practice plan, ready to go. The plan typically included stations like hitting, defense, conditioning, mental training, vision, even babysitting. <clears throat> <laughs> the practice plan also included equipment needed for the day and specific drills with diagrams drawn out. It was a full blown out, drawn out practice plan. <clears throat> I can um, practice was planned down to the minute and executed. I can truly say we were getting better every year. In 2008, we finished with an overall record of 32 and 18. In 2009, we finished at 40 and 12 tying the home run record. In 2010, Coach Fisher led us into a record-breaking season, finishing with 53 wins and only six losses, breaking the, record, breaking the home run record this year. We made it to the big stage, the eight-team national championship. In our first game, we were called for 20 illegal pitches. Talk about anger and honestly, a feeling of hopelessness. But Coach Fisher brought out the competitive greatness in all of us. Com competitive greatness as defined by the great John Wooden, be at your best when your best is needed. Enjoyment of a difficult challenge. That's what coach encouraged us to do. We had a day of rest and we used it to watch film and make the adjustments needed. We went on to win the next game and lost to Hawaii who ended up winning it all. 
Although the outcome wasn't what we wanted, we left it all out on the field. Every person who came through this program left a better person for having been lucky enough to spend time with Coach Fisher. I know that way, I know that personally. The things we learned from her collectively carry forward into all parts of our lives. By this standard, Coach Fisher, you've achieved the highest level of success and pushed so many of us towards it too. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for letting me be the smallest piece of your amazing journey. Congratulations on this much deserved recognition. Uh, there's an African word, Ubuntu. It's a philosophical concept of which there's no English word for. Ubuntu is about togetherness, compassion, humanity, and oneness. It's founded on the belief that a person is a person only through other people, and that myself is possible only through you being your very best. There's no direct translation, but I believe deep down in my core, it's a concept that is understood by the folks in this room. And if there were a definition in the dictionary, it would say roadrunner softball next to it. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is I am so powerfully feel this award should not have my name on it because I'm not me without the magic, fate, destiny, luck, and intersection of three amazing groups of people I've had the incredible fortune to have in my life the MSU Denver Athletic Department, my family, and the Roadrunner softball players and coaches. Uh, three communities that were responsible for this lightning storm <laughs> that was my time here that I want to acknowledge begins with the, the lead engineer. And of course, that is, that is Joan. She's a rock star. And I know that because you don't have to say Joan. Sorry, Dan, you don't have to say Joan McDermott. You just say Joan, and everyone knows who you're talking about. <laughs> She's like Beyonce. Uh, so, yeah. Um, but Joan, the impact of your time here is just beyond measure. And thank you for your vision and your guidance of a young Spitfire coach. And thanks for believing in me and believing in the team and surrounding me with the greatest community of people and coaches. Some of the other engineers, of course, are Dr. Jordan, Joe Q, Elaine, Dr. Fryett, and so many more, and the greatest of coaches and support staff that I had the privilege of working with. Um, Bobby, Kenny, Dave, Linda, Jen Frazier, Andy, Eric, and Sandy, just to name a few. The Hall of Famers, Danny, Debbie, and now someone who I have the privilege of joining in the club with tonight, Adrian. This award is truly them laying this foundation and guiding me into this like soft, successful landing. Um, I still remember one time Adrian came and talked to our team about mental toughness, and she described the exact moment that she kicked that goal for the national championship with such eloquence and vividness. And to hear from her it was like gold and our team was just on the edge of their seats, thirsty for the knowledge of, you know, what are the thinking patterns of a champion, and I've just in, enjoyed learning about um, Yamara's incredible seasons and accomplishments, and um, another time we were, I think we were overly amped because we were, we were super angry and we were being personal about um, this one transfer that left us and went to Colorado Mines and, sorry Annie, <laughs> but <laughs> we, were, we were so angry because she was really talented and, and Linda, Coach Lappy came and talked to us and um, was telling us how to perform in big games and she said, you know, they're gonna, they're gonna punch you but you just, you gotta punch them back. You gotta, you've gotta punch them back harder, you know? And if you guys know Linda, like she's the nicest person but she was serious, like, hit them and let them know. I mean, she didn't mean punch them, obviously, but but she was like, you know, punch back and let them know who you are, and that just kind of became our thing. So to be around these women champions, it was just, it was incredible. So the people here made this dream of a national contender softball team come true. And the next part of the Umbutu equation was and is my family. So 
um, if you'll indulge me for just a minute, because I don't think the, the families of the coaches really get the, the acknowledgement that they deserve. So, Dad, you're um, the most positive glass half full person I've ever met in my life. And uh, you endlessly said something really simple to me, which was hang in there. <laughs> Uh, you've believed in me and every athlete that I've coached with all your heart, and you've showed me. Those practice plans were probably like my dad's equations, you know? So, um, <laughs> and the trigonometry, Molly, that all, that all came from my dad. Um, <laughs> so, um, but you just believed in every person. Um, my dad gave 47 years of service to his field and his university, and uh, he just, he demonstrated what, you know, being a part of a university and a learning culture was all about. So um, I never heard him once complain. So I love you, Dad. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and my mom, you guys probably know my mom. She's so strong. She never had the opportunities I was afforded, but she blazed a trail. Uh, you were my first coach. You showed me how to approach life and coaching with enthusiasm. Um, my voice came from my mom. Maybe a few. <laughs> Maybe a few cuss words, um, but you were shattering glass ceilings and coaching middle school and high school boys before anyone else, and you showed me I could be a classy lady, but still strong and tough as nails, sweaty, dirty softball player, and you put thousands of miles on your car to be there for Garrett so that I could be a, a career coach. And now you're giving it back in your, I don't know if I should say this, I might be in trouble. In your mid 70s, you're still having a positive impact on young people and she's coaching again, she's coaching. So mom, thank you so much. And my big brother Matt is here and he made me so tough. I wanted to be just like you. So like I couldn't be scared of things like snakes and frogs and heights, I just, like, I had to overcome them. And to watch you compete and push yourself was just poetry in motion. Uh, you inspired me with your passion for your sport, and you're really the true athlete and teacher of us. Uh, now I get to watch you teach fly fishing, so, for your retirement, and I'm so proud to be your little sister. Thanks for long talks and encouragement when things got hard, and I, I'm still sorry about that time I jumped in and pulled that kid off you when you were having a fight in sixth grade. And um, I, made, I made everyone think that you needed like your fourth grade sister to protect you. <laughs> sorry, I love you. I love you, bro. <laughs> um, to my soulmate and love of my life, my husband, Joe. <laughs> uh, there's a Gabby Barrett song that's one of the good ones and I think it was written with you in mind. Um, solid, steady, loves me like he should. We should all find us one, and they're out there minus one. You saved me, Joe, and I'm not me without you. So thanks for supporting my dreams and for making me laugh when I get really, really pissed. <laughs> uh, and to Garrett, my son, I have so much to say. Uh, thanks for always coming to every single game that you could. And I always wanted to make you proud when I saw you out there in your little, or your Otero uniform and your Metro uniform. You sacrificed a lot. You had a mom that was pretty tired. I think that's how you learned to read because we'd go to read and I'd fall asleep in like two pages and he'd have to just read to himself. <laughs> oh, but anyway, you, you had a mom who wasn't that great at always leaving stress and passion for the game at the office. and. You had a mom that spent a lot of nights away, but within that, you paid attention, you found your own passion and discipline and your own beliefs and work ethic, and now I can't believe how time flies. You're about to have a degree and a, like a, I don't, I think he's gotten one B in college, and then he took a W because he didn't want the B, so. Um, <laughs> but um, you found lasting love and friendship with a wonderful person, Erin, and she, you, you two treat each other, it's inspirational how you guys, uh, your relationship, and I'm just so, so proud of you. I can't believe what an incredible baseball player you are, and I'm so excited to see how you, you take that, what you learned in baseball into the next chapters of your life, and I'm sorry for my 50% of the DNA that caused you to be un under six foot tall because I think you might be MLB worthy or something, but sorry about that. <laughs>
Uh, but, and now I just want to talk about the team, the athletes and the coaches and their families. So I don't even, I don't know where to begin. There was so much commitment and boldness in this group. Um, you know, there's a great poem, until one is committed, there is hesitancy and ineffectiveness. And, but there's one elementary to, truth that the one moment you definitely commit yourself, all sorts of things occur and, and everything starts to move in your favor and unforeseen things happen. And, and no, things that no woman could have dreamed would come her way and whatever you can do or dream that you can do, begin it and begin it now. And that is what we had. We had the definite commitment. Um, we developed a sense of toughness, a sense of pride in the work, a sense of empowerment, an unabashed confidence, confidence that we were gonna play our own style of play. And I mean, we were gonna swing, we were gonna swing for the fences. <laughs> <laughs> and and we did that. We did just that. Um, we had tremendous pitching and defense to back up our bats, but we were much more than our arms and, and our bats and our pitchers. We, we just decided that we were so fortunate to be here because of the reinstatement of the program, and we made a, a decision to never give or accept excuses. So when it was cold, we practiced in the gym, and we used those dark you know, the dark squishy balls and we could barely see. And we did defensive practice in the racquetball court during the winter. <laughs> um, we drove 11 hours to Silver City, New Mexico and, and, and beat, beat them all four games. We cleared snow off the field for two days. We used a sawzaw, like this would never be okay now, but I hob and, and Amber over there using a sawzaw and like cutting the, panels out of the fence and, and replacing them because our fence was needed, you know, needed some work. And um, <laughs> we played four games in two days in, in our conference. And to give you a level of comparison in Division I, it's, you play three games in three days. I mean, it's, it's very soft. <laughs> so I, I truly believe we were the mentally like toughest team in the country. We never complained about things that were the same for both teams. We took care of watering and dragging our own field, and we just we enjoyed that. We were grateful to be playing, and we were just grateful to have a program. So, um, you know, we just the pressure started mounting in 2010 because we were winning so much, but. And we got nationally ranked, and I remember Andy, I was like, Andy, shut up, we are not. And I was like, I slammed my door, I was like, I don't want to hear it, Andy, you know. Um, but we were able to just keep things simple, get a good split step, get, you know, win this pitch, and now go do it again. And there was never a greater example of that mentality. You saw it on the video, and it was the, the Wayne State girl was like climbing into the, you know, into the soccer field trying to catch a home run that Janessa hit, but it was two outs and two strikes, and this is just, I still tell the story, Tara's up there, and she just refused to go down, and we're down one to nothing. And she, she fouled off 13 pitches and finally drew a walk. She was down to her last strike, and then Janessa, we're down one to nothing in the bottom of the seventh, two outs, and Janessa just comes up and hits that, that bomb for a walk-off, walk-off victory. And it was, yeah, it was. <laughs> so I just, I just believe that we're still our, we were and still are one of the greatest team stories of all time. Um, we had no team captains. Everybody was a captain of something. Everybody, everybody took their role and what they were the best at. And um, they, they knew how to have fun. You know, it was always, Coach Molly wants to know they'd blame each other. Can we get, can we do this? Can we get ice cream? You know, and they're sprinting and, uh, but the crazy thing is, like, like Coach Becerra said, that like winning was never the main thing. Um, the main thing was playing to our potential and giving our very, very best and becoming all that we were capable of on and off the field. And, and winning was a byproduct of, of the dash. That was, our, that was kind of one of our poems. And not the beginning, not the end, but living each day, making each day our masterpiece. And um, like Coach Becerra said, she was one of my most, most um, famous players at Otero. Her nickname was V-Mama. 
She took care of everybody. She was my right-hand woman, and she is still one of the toughest, most incredible women I know. She was working two jobs. Um, I still remember you telling me when you're pregnant with Michaela, <laughs> and we said, it's gonna be okay, you know, and we were kind of scared, like, okay, it's gonna be okay, and now look at her, and, and Tay, and your parents were just with us, the family, the Mbutu of the entire community. They believed in us, and they said, you'll be fine, you know, you'll be okay, but they say it takes pressure to make a diamond, and, and you are still a brilliant, shining diamond in my life. And Coach Madrill, um, yeah. <laughs> Coach Madrill was also someone who volunteered his time because he loved being around the team and just loved the game. And I never met someone coach with so much passion and dedication, and you just have had an enormous impact on countless athletes, and we couldn't have done it without you. And you continue, I continue to cherish our, our friendship, so thank you. <laughs> okay, and um, the families, uh, my dear friend and, and dad of our catcher, Buzz, you were an extension of the coaching staff. He was like our mentor, friend, field crew. He was, he was glue. Um, and we'd talk about first and thirds, and, and he took care of our field every game day. Uh, and he was a wonderful big buddy to Garrett. And I just, to this day, I have this wonderful image of him and Garrett riding around in the gator, and Garrett still takes care of the field the way you taught him, Buzz. It's, it's perfection. It, it, it really is. <laughs> yeah. And uh, the moms were amazing, the families, all of them, but uh, Edie was our powerful single mom that constantly told us, y'all are amazing women who could do anything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so... Anyway, the, the series of incredulous events that saw uh, people on their second chance, risk takers, come together and make the most magical time span in our lives. At a t and this is a time we can look back on without regret and with so much pride. And the magic is, is still happening here. And with Todd Thurman and what he continues to fil facilitate, Roadrunner Athletics is in a place I'm so proud to have come from, and um, with women coaches like, like Annie and Tanya's sustained success and the competing for championships, it just gives me so much pride to be part of this. I, I really shouldn't be in the same sentence as Adrian or in the same Hall of Fame class as her. I should not be going in with the likes of Danny and Debbie or Joan. Uh, but I will accept this award with so much umbutu and so much love and respect for the community, and I will humbly accept on behalf of the community that became and is Roadrunner Softball. Thank you. <laughs>